Welcome back to chapter 48 of the Dragon Ball Super Manga, and you're going to want to subscribe to the channel as I cover the manga every single month. Now, if this chapter is anything, it is a bridge between the first half of the Moro arc and the second half of the Moro arc. Um, so we start off with Boo trying to turn Moro basically into candy that looks like his candy beam. And he's just pummeling him. And this reminded me actually of Vegeta versus Goku Black in the Goku Black Saga. After Vegeta went into the room in Spirit of Time, they went back to the future. And Vegeta just, oh, oh, just, just gave it to freaking Goku Black. And that really reminded me of this. Because Moro cannot do anything. Um, that is until uh, Boo slightly gets distracted by the freaking <laughs> bystanders. Which also reminded me, um, okay, Goku and Vegeta don't have any energy, so Moro's probably not absorbing their energy, but I feel like he's probably absorbing Jocko and Maris's energy, and as we know, Jocko is the most elite galactic patrolman, and so Moro should be like, I don't know, Beerus level at least, from just Jocko's energy, <laughs> but uh, that is a joke, <laughs> but okay, he gets distracted, and then Moro mouth blasts, I... Remind me if I am uh, mistaken here, but I think this is the first time we actually see Moro do an energy blast by himself. You know, we've seen him tear holes in guys and use his magic to use the planet's energy to attack, but I don't think we've ever seen him actually do an energy blast, and, it, and it's very fitting that he's actually doing a mouth blast. And I love how this is portrayed here. Uh, Boo looks away and then boom, his head is gone. <laughs> and you just see this like fat uh, thing with no head. <laughs> and, and of course, as we know, Boo isn't really phased by this because he's just a blob. <laughs> and then his fist turns into his head. <laughs> this is freaking awesome. I love this. And I love uh, Moro's, Moro's facial expression facial expression <laughs> but and then he just whops him so ah, god I, I just I just love it's it's not too much of the same and that's what I was worried about that this chapter would be just more of the same more boo just beating up Moro but he is beating up Moro but they're kind of switching it up it's just not him pummeling him the entire time um, I like that Moro actually gets a little bit of an opening there. Boo's using all kinds of different moves on him. It's very interesting and it keeps everything fresh. And I'm really enjoying the art in this. I don't remember seeing very many wonky drawings, but like a lot of the expressions are really cool. Um, and of course, Mar Moro's getting really frustrated and he's like, I'm po I won't possibly lose to you. I'm Moro, the magical uh, freaking god of the universe or whatever <laughs> like what does moro consider himself to be i hope see i'm really hoping as i have been hoping that they really uh delve into actual moro's character like what does he think of himself as he's just been a bad guy so far and he shows that he's just a, been a typical bad guy so far so i really hope that they go into his psyche and how he views himself and what his goals are and he has a wish that you don't know what he wished for and I love that because it keeps everything open it keeps it on a cliffhanger and it keeps the mystery alive to uh, uh, build more interest for what's to come and look forward to what's to come and I love that but Boo is awesome he's uh Moro says I, I won't possibly lose to you if I was full power you wouldn't even be you know you would be an ant compared to me and Boo's like you suck <laughs> you're making excuses you suck <laughs> but oh man and he uh, takes a note from Tian's playbook, and instead of four arms, though, he has six arms. Boo has to be like, I got to be better than Tian, and I'll do six arms, because, <laughs> you know, Tian has the four-armed technique. Um, and I love that he starts pummeling him, and then he's like, uh, you know, um, I think I'm just going to, you know, stand here while my fists pummel him. <laughs> And he's just standing there while Moro's getting pummeled. And he's like, okay, I'll do this technique because Maris, Maris uh, suggests this technique. And I'm thinking this technique is probably the uh, Grand Supreme Kai's technique of stealing Moro's uh, magic from him like he did originally. 
And so uh, Boo uses his fist to kind of hold Moro down in order to do this. But boom, perfect timing. Uh, the sky turns dark. And what nobody accounted for was Cranberry. Like these guys are so focused on Moro and how dangerous Moro is. And, and there was some really great build up for this. And it makes sense that these guys wouldn't think of Cranberry as, as a threat or anything like that. Um, and they're, they're basically thinking he's kind of out of the picture, but no, he went, killed some of the Namekians and, uh, basically I, like, I don't know, I'm thinking this is like a mind control device that Cranberry has up to, uh, Eska. And that's how he is able to get these wishes and which is awesome because this whole time we're like, okay, well they can't speak Namekian. How are they going to wish for this thing? Okay. Uh, easy, easy fix mind control device. <laughs> so uh, Perunga gets uh, summoned and I, I love this. This is just perfect timing and it could have happened at any other point during this, but of course it happens right before Boo does the final blow against Moro as is as happens in Dragon Ball, you know, right before Vegito gets the finishing blow on Zamasu, uh, he defuses. <laughs> so um, if Boo did get the final blow, that would be rather anticlimactic. Uh, Cranberry, man, props to this guy. Pro like Cranberry is now my favorite uh, villain underling um, in this arc. Oh wait, he's the only villain underling. <laughs> Uh, so he wishes for himself to get healed, which we will see gets undone immediately almost. And then uh, Moro, you know, of course, all the heroes are like, oh, I'm going to be distracted by Perunga. Oh, instead of just, you know, finish the job. Like so many times these heroes just get distracted and they're distracted for long periods of time. And uh, which is understandable, but you think they would have learned by now. Nope. I am 100% focused on stopping this dangerous guy. Nothing's going to distract me, <laughs> you know, but, but of course we need the story to progress. So, uh, uh, Cranberry is healed by Perunga and, um, <clears throat> Goku and Vegeta are like, Oh shoot, we have to go stop this guy. You know, what if he wished for Moro to be Im immortal? That'd be crazy. I feel like there might've been other ways for Moro to get his magic back. What do you guys think? Um, obviously there's the earth dragon balls and the super dragon balls too. So, and universe six dragon balls. Holy crap. Does universe six earth have dragon balls as well? Did they have, uh, Kami's twin or the, uh, nameless Namekian go to earth and create dragon balls in universe six as earth. Very interesting to think about. Uh, but Goku and Vegeta fly over there and Moro's like, oh crap, hurry, wish for my magic to come back. And he does. And this Moro's aura is really erratically and kind of like harsh looking to just shows how, uh, just shows that he's, he's different now. And he is he means business and he just zooms right past Goku and Vegeta. And these guys are like, God dang it, man, we were almost there. And then Cranberry's like, Oh, I better use the third wish quickly. But unfortunately for him, he does not as he now has a hole in his torso. <laughs> so, um, looking at the leaks and expecting this is highly expected as is, you know, a, typical villain thing to do with their underlings is to just kill their underlings when they're not useful anymore. And I was hoping Moro wouldn't do this. However, that being said, I think the way that this went down is pretty interesting because Moro actually has a reason to do it because if he had not gone and killed Cranberry, Cranberry would have used the last wish of the Dragon Balls, which Moro wants to use. Um, so I think that was rather interesting. I would, I would have actually really liked for Cranberry to stick around longer and maybe who knows, even help the good guys after Moro betrays him like this. Um, but I don't know. Good, goodbye cranberry. Um, by the way, I make the best cranberry sauce, the best homemade cranberry sauce. 
Uh, if you want the recipe, let me know. I will uh, put it in the comments if you want. <laughs> Completely relevant, right? But anyway, uh, Moro's like, ha, huh, I made my third wish. I have all of my magic back. You guys are helpless against me. Uh, but for no reason whatsoever, I'm just going to leave you alive. You know, second time, Moro. This is the second time you're just going to leave these guys alone, alive. Like, can you leave yourself open to defeat anymore, dude? Man, you're just dumb. <laughs> For lack of a better word, word, word uh, Moro is dumb here. Um, so this is basically the rest of the pages are wrap up, uh, except for one very interesting thing. And I love the art of the, of Namek, you know, the, the scenery is very detailed, especially in this shot of Moro looking down on, on the ship. Um, very interesting. He quote unquote disappears and he masks his key, whatever. Um, but he's going to eat the planet. So he starts eating the planet for more power. And I think it's very interesting also that it is explained that, you know, Moro might have all of his magic back, but he's not necessarily physically that much stronger. He probably is a little bit, but he has 100% of his magical abilities. And I'm wondering what that actually entails because he seemed to have a lot of magical ability before. So what does he have more now that he didn't have uh, before. So Boo uh, regenerates Eska and he regenerates Goku and Vegeta's key and all of the other Namekians are dead. It's including Mori. Poor Mori, man. God, these Namekians have been through too much. But I think this chapter really uh, helped to pick things up. And I also love that. What, what do you guys think about this? Do you like how Boo uh, trades places with the Daikaioshin? Um, I think that's really interesting. And he's like two people in one body. And I love that doing the memory stuff uh, helps this Daikaioshin kind of uh, use Boo and vice versa. And I think that's really cool. So now it's going to be Goku, Vegeta, and the Daikaioshin. It's really uh, kind of switching things up and making things a little bit more fresh than just like the Goku and Vegeta show. You know what I'm saying? But now that... Um, Goku has his energy black back. He now can do instantaneous movement. So they go off to try to find Moro before he sucks the planet dry. So for now, we are staying on Namek, a planet of one. <laughs> one resident in Eska, that poor little freaking kid. Um, I think Goku and Vegeta trying to find Moro is a bad idea because now they are at full power again and the Daikaoshin's like, yeah, I'll go with you. You know, just keep a minimum of 100 feet from Moro. <laughs> you know, act like you have a, act like Moro has a restraining order against you. <laughs> and there you go, you're good. Um, so I guess that th sums up my thoughts on this chapter. I really enjoyed it. I think it was... Um, a, a dramatic improvement from last chapter, even though last chapter was pretty cool too. And I really like where this is heading. It's things are fresh and I like how they are having this bridge chapter, uh, to kind of transition into the, the last kind of parts of the arc. And there you have it. What are you got? What do you guys think? Uh, let drop your thought waves down in the comments below. And as always, uh, thank you very much for watching and take it easy. Mm -hmm.